it going guys and welcome back to another episode of Trailmakers Creations by That Dom Guy. Thanks for joining me. Today's episode we're going to be starting with a viewer request for a... I can't even remember what it was called exactly. It was like a, a one of the early rockets that the, the Germans used to bombard uh, the UK, London, from the shores. Uh, they would launch basically it was a plane that would fly on its own. It was some of the first uh, like missile based uh, attacks, rocket based. Uh, so I attempted to build one. It was basically a small plane that you would launch from another plane that would fly for a certain distance and then it would just basically dive bomb its target. Not real accurate. Didn't really work that well, but uh, it was enough to scare the, uh, those people in London at that point in time in the 40s. But uh, yeah, so this basically starts with we hit number one for our gimbal jets. Taking off is not even an option. Uh, so once we have our gimbals kicked in, I can use the jet to take off. Gives me just enough buoyancy. Number three kicks on some permanent engines, allows me to get some altitude. So once we get some altitude, we can detach our rocket like this space bar detaches and then it flies along for 10 seconds and then sheds its wings and dive bombs its target. If it doesn't fly into something. Oh, shed its wings in time and Boom. So we can see that from another perspective. We'll go like this, detach. And then we can zoom out like this. Oh, our plane ripped in half. But we can see our bomb keeps flying straight. And then once a certain amount of time goes by, the wings detach. And then it dive bombs its target. The engines kick in again. And boom. You can see that the missile itself looks very much like the... Uh, Oh, 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 a little bit of air time. Wings come off, flames kick in, dive bombs, the jets kick back in again. It also has a altitude sensor on it, so it detonates at water level instead of diving into the water. So just in case there's a boat there, it's going to explode at water level as well. So again, not 100% completed on that build. I'm just not sure exactly how much more I can add to it without making it non-functional again. But that was a good suggestion. Thanks for the suggestion. All right, let's take a look at our next build. The next creation to take a look at is a helicopter. This is an attack chopper. It's got exploding cannons as well as small cannons on it. The helicopter blades use a mixture of the helicopter blades themselves and some wing pieces. And a small propeller on the back here, a couple of small thrusters as well. We got some extending landing gear. It is dual piloted or dual seated, so you can have your pilot in the back and your gunner in the front. The gunner controls the guns as far as with Q and E. We can extend our small guns like this, left control, toggles those, and E brings out our big cannons and left shift, fires those. We can bring both of those in, keep them nice and small, or we can have them out for a wider range of damage. And space bars for lifting off. Oh, but I can't fly from the gunner seat. We gotta get in the pilot seat. Good old space bar. We have really good control. Again, it's a little uh, finicky if you want that kind of uh, ag agility. So we can fly like this. This is actually really good for strafing targets on the ground. Wants to fly nose down a wee bit. We are using helicopter engines for steering as well to help with our uh, rotation. Uh, number one will give us some jets that will help us fly forward at a faster rate if we need to get somewhere quickly as compared to just the helicopter blades themselves. But as you can see, we can fly fairly stably. So we also have some bombs on here as well. So not, not only do we have cannons, but we have bombs as well that are dropped with number two and number three. Two, three, two bombs. Boom, boom. So you can bomb your target as well if you're just hovering over top. Landing is pretty easy because the propellers themselves want to give you some drag as you're dropping to the ground. You just got to give it a little bit of, little bit of uh, space bar. All right, let's uh, let's let's bring in a target. So what I've been using as a target recently is my my warp engine. I wanted to build like a warp drive, like you see in the Enterprise, the warp core. So that was my attempt at the warp core, but hey, that makes a good target to be sitting there, right? 
Yeah. Now we're gonna come over here to Mr. Helichopper. Chopper helicopter. I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, you are so toast, buddy. You'll see, because it wants to fly with the nose down like that, that's perfect for strafing your targets. Boom! in. Whoa, direct shot. No more warp core for you. Maybe we can actually fly backwards. So it works really good for taking apart ground targets, as you can see. Boom. Nothing left of that warp core. And the smaller cannons are for dogfighting, obviously, if there's a plane in the air. But again, you can probably set those to alternating so they're firing more rapidly. So yeah, don't got a name for that one. So if you can uh, think of a, a cool name for a black and white dirty snowball of a helicopter, let me know in the comments down below. Alright, let's take a look at our next build, shall we? So this build is based off of a seal, like a seal pup. The way they're so agile in the water, the way they can swim, they're so impossible to catch, basically, for a shark, right? I was in a public server yesterday where uh, Buddy had a great big shark, and I brought out my little seal here, and it was like watching a documentary. You know, the little seal was totally following behind the shark, avoiding him so that the shark couldn't actually get to the seal. The shark is faster, but is nowhere near as agile as something like this. So I tried to make this do basically what a SEAL could do, it's just spacebar and uh, WASD for controls, but super agile, nice and flexible in the joints, kind of shaped like a SEAL as well. Spacebar makes the back legs kind of tuck back, see if I let go they'll stretch out normal. And then when you hit spacebar they kind of lean back a little bit like a SEAL, kind of making itself a little more aerodynamic. But this is just fun to uh, to rip around and do do tricks. He does uh, d does do a couple tricks, so you can do the old loop de loop out of the water and then dive right back in. Looks all natural, right? You can push up and down a little bit like this, kind of gets that effect. So he can jump up like this. And his belly is up, so now he's got a, a little bit of he's doing a little bit of water walking. Oh no! Oh, oh, backwards. Okay, let's try that again. So we come up like this, we do flip, and we go backwards. Whee! He stays up like this, you can see he does this cool little trick, and then he jumps up, and right back into the water. Loop de loop. So it looks very natural, feels very natural, and this is simply set with the large steering hinges in between the, the sections, the body sections. Set to like 15 degrees, I believe, for each one. And then the hinges actually get weaker as they go move towards the back of the, the seal. So you get like a 50% strength and then a 40% strength and a 30% so that the rear sections more or less have a little bit of control, but they'll more follow the the front section of the body as compared to wanting to move 100% strength on their own. So yeah, this just has the underwater propellers. The front wings don't move or the front limbs. Fins don't move at all really. The back is where all the twisting action is happening for the steering and the up and down as well. So it's actually a really straightforward build. There is a helicopter engine in between the head and the neck and that is for your yaw, so you can get a decent amount of roll. You can see that really good when you jump out of the water. You can actually do like two and a half flips. So that is the silver-bellied seal. I'll be uploading that onto the shop. That's always kind of fun. Especially when you're uh, being chased by sharks or other predatory water animals. This is a, a great build to completely avoid them.
don't have to be faster than them, you just gotta be more agile. The agilities. Nature is such a great place for inspiration. All right, let's head back up to the deck and take a look at our next build. So now this build, I'm not sure exactly what to call it again, nameless. I just had a lot of ideas and no, uh, no time to think of uh, fancy names for these things. So this is basically a flat tank. It's got the tank barrel on the front here, but it also has two missiles in here. Now this was a different attempt at making missiles that don't necessarily just detach and then launch. These actually lift themselves up and then launch. I wanted something that would be able to lift it up out of the vehicle and then take off so that you can actually be driving or moving while you fire these things. You don't have to be totally sitting still. So, space bars for a normal cannon. Q and E turns the nose of the cannon. But the big thing with this is our missiles, which we just hit number one and two. So number one launches that, pops it up, kicks in, and away it goes, and kaboom. Number two, same thing, up it goes. So there's a couple of gimbal jets on there that will lift it for a certain amount of time and then they turn off. And then that's when the thrusters kick in. So we can rebuild. And the nice thing with this is that you can actually be driving and hit number one, and number two. And you can actually take out your targets ahead of you without having to stop. So it's kind of cool having a portable rocket launcher. Normally when you're launching rockets, any kind of small movement or whatever causes the flight path to not work properly. So that's why I wanted something like this that would be able to lift up out. So as we're driving, we can launch them both. Oh, and that happens too sometimes because the front sensor is what detonates the explosives. So go like this. We go one and two. See that front sensor? We want to make sure that that is not touching anything or else we are toast ourselves. So let's have a look at these. So you can see there's two gimbals on the missile themselves and then the thruster on the top and there's a thruster on the bottom as well. So the gimbals simply lift it straight up and XOR gate activates the thrusters and then they push off after a certain amount of time. These sensors in the front are set to like 0.5. So obviously that's why there's nothing directly in front of them. When we detach, the gimbals kick in, then the gimbals turn off. So you can set the strength on those to whatever you like to keep you keep your missiles in the air as long as you want or have them drop out of the air as quick as you want. But I thought that was a real cool idea to try and get missiles to actually launch out of a vehicle while you're able to drive it. That will take off faster than your vehicle will. So we're going to set a target up down here. And guess what we're going to use for target? That's right. We use the old warp engine. So we got our warp engine down there. Let's see, we'll zip down here and see if we can calculate our distance on these rockets. Go like this. And we'll go number one, number two. Oh, direct shot. Look at that. Then you can just drive up and finish it. And that's how that one works. So yeah, flat tank with missiles on board. Are we uploading that? If I can find a name for it, if you can think of a better name for it, leave it in the comments. All right, next build. So if some of y'all are into baseball, which I know a lot of you are, I decided to build like a batting cage, like a home run batting cage where you could do some practice. So the test was to see if I could get him to swing a bat like a person would. So what I got is two pistons on here connected to two steering hinges, small hinges, that are connected to a helicopter engine on the side. Now there's no pivoting as far as in the arms themselves, but one arm, A and D, actually pulls one arm in and leaves the other arm out. So we get this action. And with those zero strength pistons, or zero strength hinges, on his hands, we can actually get him to swing left and right just by shortening one piston and lengthening the other piston at the same time. So we have our guy swinging his baseball bat here, and as you can see, I've used a little bit of the uh, the larger steering hinges and some servos 
to, to get a bit of the rotation in the body in the right angle so that he swings upwards as he's going to hit. As you can see from the side here, he leans back and then swings upwards, leans back as he swings, just like a batter would. And then we have our beach ball dispenser right there, which dispenses our balls. We can only ever have three. But it was perfect for ball practice. If you, if you can hit the ball. All right, start again, a little pop. No, that's, that's not big enough. Okay, get out of the way. Get out of the way. All right, so a little pop and sweep. Nice one. There, that's at least a single. Pop it again. So this, boom, that's a homer. That's a homer. Out of the park. Look at that. Gandhi. So for anyone that wants to do, oh, that's a good one too. Whack. Anybody that wants to practice their baseball swing, figured this would be a good one for uh, see how many you can hit out of the park or out of a certain area. Oh, that one's pop fly. Or try and build a vehicle, get a couple of vehicles built. This might be an idea for you and the boys, Scrap Man. Build a vehicle that can catch these balls. So if somebody is up hitting the balls, and whoever can catch, say you get 10, 10, 10 bats, and whoever can catch the most out of those 10 balls. So you'd have two guys out in the field running around with like a big mitt kind of vehicle that can move in all directions to catch one of these big balls. And it would have to close because one of these things is going to hit the inside and bounce right out, right? So that'd be a, a good idea. Oh, jeez. Can't hit that any harder. Whack! Oh, that one got in the way. Hey, interference, interference. Uh-oh. Okay, little tap. Bang. Oh, that was a nice one. So there you go. If you like baseball, here's a little batting practice for you. You can, you might be able to even uh, build a batting cage around this. But you can actually hit them pretty far, so I don't think you'd actually be able to build a vehicle or a, a housing that you could actually contain these things in, unless you want them bouncing around and coming back to you. Because you can hit these suckers pretty hard sometimes. Whack! Oh, wow, that was a bad one. And up, and ha! Oh, nope, that's a grounder. And another one, come on, out of the park! Oh, that one probably would have hit the fence. And again, go! There we go. Let's go deep center field, deep center field. Oh, caught by the outfielder. But not this one. Oh, yeah, maybe that one. Or this one. Nope. Or that one. Oh, yeah, that one's toast. That's gone. So, yeah, that's my little baseball swinging dude. And so for our last build of the video, let's take a look at a... It's not completed yet, but it's a catamaran. With a couple of outriggers. It's got the attempted looking sail on there. Space bar. Gives us our normal propulsion. As you can see, we got some wings there. Or actually what's holding the pontoons out. So that gives us a wee bit of lift as we're going forward. Pull the body up out of the air. We can do about 100 kilometers an hour this way. We've got decent steering. But then we can hit number one, which engages some thrusters, and that gives us fold up the, the sail. That folds back, kicks in our rainbow maker there on the top of the fin. And we're doing 170 kilometers an hour. We got those wings there, giving us some lift as we're coming forward. We can turn those thrusters off. We slow down. Our sail should come back. The rainbow goes away. Ta-da! No, we're just a normal boat. I'm just cruising. Just doing a normal cruising. So again, this was another attempt at uh, getting some kind of a ground effect vehicle where you could actually get just enough lift to keep you out of the water, but not enough lift to get you in the air in a boat. This was a catamaran style. So if none of you have tried building a boat like this, this is definitely a cool thing to try. Trying to make that more aerodynamic. Then we've got a little bit, a couple of stabilizer wings up top there as well that hopefully generate a little bit of lift because of the angle that they're at too, so. And we can still steer at these speeds. So yeah, that was kind of a cool design for a boat. 
trying to make like a fold-up sailboat that would become more aerodynamic as the pieces folded up. Ta -da. It's just me and my boat, man. Just do it sufficient. So yeah, I don't have a name for that either. The crazy cat, Moran. All right, I think we're going to leave that one here, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching again. Thanks a million for subscribing. Don't forget to leave a comment, hit that like button, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.